Let A be an m by n matrix, B be an m tuple, and C be an n tuple. And we let P denote this linear programming problem. Then the dual problem of P is the following linear programming problem. Here, Y is an m tuple of variables. The problem P is called the primal problem. And let's see an example. Suppose that my primal problem is the following. Then the dual problem is as follows. Notice that y has m entries, and m in this case is 3, so we'll have y1, y2, y3, times the tuple b, which is 1, 0, minus 2, and subject to y1, y2, y3, times the coefficient matrix of this system here. And C transpose comes from here. Now we can rewrite this system as individual constraints. So this can be rewritten as, so the first column is 1, 2, minus 3. So I have y1 plus 2y2 minus 3y3 equals 1. And the second column will give us minus y1 plus y2 plus 2y3 equals 1. And so we can replace this with this. And that's what we'll do. And we can rewrite the objective function as well. So it's going to be y1 plus 0y2 minus 2y3. So this is the dual problem of this problem here. Let's now look at the relationship between the primal and the dual problems. Suppose we have an x satisfying this and a y that satisfies this. So we're going to let ai transpose denote the i row of a. So a looks like this. And then these inequalities can be written as a1 transpose x greater than equal to b1 and so on up to am transpose x greater than equal to bm. Now, if we take a y that satisfy these, since each component is non-negative, these inequalities must hold. And so the sum of the left-hand side must be at least the sum of the right-hand side. That gives us the following. And this can be written more succinctly as y transpose b, with y being the tuple y1 of the ym. And over here, we have y transpose times a times x. Because y transpose times x is c transpose, we have c transpose x, at least y transpose b. So this inequality tells us that if you have a feasible solution to p, its objective function value cannot be less than the objective function value of any feasible solution to d. This relationship is called weak duality. And if you happen to find x and y such that this is in fact equal, then x is an optimal solution for p and y is an optimal solution to d. The question now becomes, is it always the case that you can find x and y such that these are equal? The answer is a qualified yes. That's because we need to make some assumptions. We need to assume that p has an optimal solution. So we're going to give a sketch of the following theorem. If P has an optimal solution, then D is going to have an optimal solution as well. And the optimal value of P is the same as the optimal value of D. So the proof that we're going to look at uses something that we have already seen in the video when we talk about the fundamental theorem of linear programming. What we first do is, we first rewrite this problem to the equivalent problem, minimizing Z subject to z minus c transpose x equals 0 and a x greater than equal to b. Now in fact, we don't really need equality here. We could change this to a greater than equal to inequality. And that means we want to find among all solutions to this system the minimal possible z value. And the way we do this is we use Fourier-Moskin elimination to eliminate x from the system 
z minus c transpose x squared then go to 0, a x squared then equal to b. And remember that we'll end up with an inequality z greater than equal to gamma, where gamma is the optimal value. So what this means is there is a non-negative linear combination of all these inequalities that gives you this inequality. So we can say there exists alpha y1 up to ym greater than equal to 0, such that if you take alpha times the first inequality plus y transpose ax greater than equal to y transpose b, you'll get the inequality z greater than equal to gamma. Now that means y transpose b is equal to gamma, and on the left hand side, there's no z here, so alpha must be 1, and if alpha is 1, then minus c transpose plus y transpose a must be 0, so y transpose a has to be c transpose. And that means the y we have here is going to be a feasible solution to the dual problem. But we also see that its objective function value, y transpose b, is equal to gamma, which is the optimal value of p. And so we have proved this theorem.